Hello everyone, welcome back, and in this video, we'll be going over a bit more about addition, a bit of subtraction, and world edit. So first off, let's handle world edit. To start, you'll need single player commands installed, and you to start this, you start by typing t slash slash wand, and this gives you this, a bronze axe. But it's a special bronze axe. It's what lets you do copying and pasting in World Edit. So first off, I'm going to place a block on top of this torch. I'm going to click on this block with the bronze axe. And you'll get this little message that says first position set. Now we want on to get our second position, because what we're going to do is copy this adder. And I'm going to go right here, because that will encompass the entire adder. So left, right click there. Make sure that's right click, not left click. And that's Okay, so we now have the entire adder selected. Now what we need to do is copy it. So we want to stand right here. Type T slash slash copy. And now we're going to go over here. And we're going to type T slash slash paste. And there, we now have another adder all the way over here. And that's great. And we can just paste it along like this. So go over here, type t slash slash paste, type t slash slash paste, and to make this easier, something you do is type t slash alias, type something short like p, and this is what you'll be able to type for the same command, and type slash slash paste. And now what we can do is, well I already have four adders, so I'm just going to damage one, and st and here if I type TP, then it now does the exact same thing as paste. And now we have the ability to copy and paste adders along. And if we want to save it so we can use it some other time, we can type T slash slash save, type the name you want, like adder, or I'll just do adder test because I already have one saved out. And there we go. Now I can select something else like this, and I can type copy it, and do whatever. I can copy that. I can paste it along, and I don't really want that, so I can do that. And now I can do slash slash load, adder, test, and now if I type TP for paste, I get the exact same thing. So that's basically world edit. Now let's talk about addition. I pasted these fairly close together in a fairly, I guess you could say, unusual manner. But they're nice lined up, and we're going to deal with handling larger numbers. So I'm just going to go ahead and place all the levers down. And we already have our one inputs. That means that these are our two inputs, 2A, 2B, 4A, 4B. 8a, 8b. So, let's just see how this works as it is, and we'll make the modifications necessary to make it handle the higher numbers. So let's start with what we know works. 1 plus 1. You can light up our 2 input, and you'll notice that that's conveniently going into the third input for our 2 adder. So now we have a third 2. This is how the third 2 works, and so we're ultimately getting a 2. So now let's add a 2 to that. So 1 plus 1 plus 2. So it's 2 plus 2. And we're getting the 2 in here and another 2 here. It's adding them together and getting our 4 output. And that's conveniently going into the 4. Or, f and this means the third input of the 4. So now we have a 4. And you might be noticing a bit of a pattern here. So if I wanted to add number 4, exact same thing. 4 plus 4 is 8. It passes it along to the 8 from our 8 output, which is conveniently plugged into the 8 adder. And we're getting an 8 here. And this is how addition works. It's already done. You just paste adders along like this, and it's nice, convenient, and it just works. So, that's how addition works. But what happens if we add an 8 to this? We don't have a 16 adder, 
we just have this sort of lonely last input. This is just sort of an artifact of this type of addition. You will always end up with an answer that has one bit more than you put in it. And in case you didn't know, a bit is just like each of these sets of binary numbers. So bit 1 is number 1, bit 2 is 2, bit 3 is 4, bit 4 is 8, it's, it's like that. So we'll always end up with one more bit than we p and started off with. Because we'll need to handle the last number. Or if you want, you can choose not to handle it, but then you can get numbers bigger than you put in. So it's really, it's your judgment call. We'll deal with that when we get to it. So, now we've handled addition. We've mastered addition. But I would like to explain a bit more of what's going on here. Because, well, hmm, I wonder if this even needs more explaining. Because I think it's pretty clear. The output just conveniently lines up with the next one, which is designed to handle it. And that's a really nice thing. So I really, I don't think that needs any more explaining. I think that's pretty clear how that works. So now we're going to handle something different. We're going to handle subtraction. How in the world could we handle subtraction? Well, conveniently enough, what we can do is we can just use add negative numbers together. Because remember, if you add adding negative numbers is the exact same thing as subtraction. Well, adding a negative number to a positive number, that is. So, how do we do this? Well, remember we have this nice convenient little inversion function? Turns out, it works mathematically too. If we invert it, we'll and use this adder setup, we'll effectively get the negative of it. The only issue is we're going to be inverting the first input. So if we do a little mathematical test, if we added negative 4 plus negative plus positive 2, that gets us, well, negative 2. We don't want a negative answer. So we'll have to invert this final output one more time to get us back to a positive number. So, that's just the way it, it works. And now we have, now if I just go ahead and do this number 2, because I'm not going to go ahead, I'm not going to do this all the way down the line, because that will just be repetitive, and you'll get the idea. Them. So, now we have our 1s and our 2s, they are now designed to handle negative numbers, after I do this. That is. Okay, so let's go ahead and subtract something, because... In theory, if our knowledge of negative numbers holds up, this is going to work. So let's just start simple. 2 minus 1. We get a 1. So, and that, that's pretty much how it works. So if a 2 minus 2, excuse me, 2 minus 0, because that is, actually ends up being 0. No, wait, hang on. This is, this is a, would end up making it 3, and that would be minus 1, which would be 2. I'm sorry, I'm getting my inputs met, mixed up. So if we want to do 2 minus 2, that gets us 0. And that's just, that's how subtraction works. And if you want a more in-depth way of why this is working, well first off, if we invert it, that's giving us a 1 effectively. You can just pass through the system, and it ends up just being 1. If we invert that again, it's a 0. So if I turn off this 1, then our, we get nothing that inverts it. So it effectively gets us a 1. That's just how our negative number handler is working. If I do 1 plus 1, if I do 1 minus 1, excuse me, that 1 gets passed through, we get 1, and there we go, nothing happens. If I do 1 minus 1, though, well, actually, hang on. If I do nothing minus 1, though, that's, well, we are getting a real negative number. And this is where our thing sort of starts to break down, because we don't really have a negative number handler. But, so, that, that's really just the way it's working. It, it, it's more easier to think of it in terms of a mathematical property than it is in terms of all the redstone logic that's going on here. So, uh, just think of it like that. You're, you're adding, a ne <laughs> you're inverting the number, which is making it negative, and just adding it to a positive number, and that's effectively doing subtraction. So, that's how subtraction works. That's how addition works. And yeah, this does tie along all the way, just like addition. So thank you, I will see you in the next video, where we will... I think we know all the functions we'll need to do to effect build a real working arithmetic logic unit. 
So thank you. See you in the next video.